Weapon and Fight armor well. retirement is fast approaching, rotating out a lot of top tier weaponry. In fact, most of the pinnacle and ritual weapons you might be using now will be capping out at 1060. Of course, you can still hang on to these for low level content and unranked PVP, but their PVE days are numbered. This has been begging the question, what the hell am I gonna replace all of this stuff with? Well, I'm going to attempt to help you out with that today. Of course, it is impossible for me to tell you what the future holds in terms of weaponry, and I have no doubt that there will be plenty of replacement weapons coming in the future, but for those looking to be a bit more prepared when September rolls around, keep watching. First, let's talk about the heavy hitters, the top tier, the meta. You got Recluse, Mountaintop, 21% Delirium, Edgewise, Spare Rations, Wendigo, Hammerhead, Blast Furnace, Breakneck, all of these things are falling out of the meta. A lot of these things do not have a direct replacement. Nothing will replace Mountaintop and will be as impactful as Mountaintop. Same with 21% Delirium, Loaded Question, stuff like that. All you can really do is find something that's sort of close. We're gonna be going over the world drops of season 11 primarily in this video to see if we can find anything to rotate along with the new season 11 weapons and anything that still is earnable right now. If you have things from earlier seasons that I have recommended in the past, then definitely keep those in mind, maybe swipe the dust off of them. But since we have a lot of returning players, I want to focus on what is available right now. Let's start with primary weapons. Hand cannons are easily the most popular of the bunch, and spare rations is the current king, all things considered. Fortunately, spare rations is among the more replaceable weapons here because it's a non-pinnacle, non-ritual weapon. Now, if you're looking to replicate the perk availability of spare rations, I think your only choice this season is old-fashioned with Feeding Frenzy and Kill Clip. Yes, I know it's a 140 RPM, but I don't think that really matters too much for PvE for most players. Dire Promise is back in Season 11 for you 150 RPM stands out there, although it can only roll with Swashbuckler. Nature of the Beast, 180 RPM, not in love with those for PvE. I would only use this if you had nothing else, like if you don't have a Nation of Beasts from Last Wish or Ancient Gospel from Garden of Salvation. We also have revamped versions of the Ikelos weapons, including a hand cannon that can roll with subsistence and rampage or vorpal weapon. This hand cannon is also a 180, but Ikelos weapons can generate warmind cells for those of you with warmind cell builds. Worth hanging on to a couple of guns if you're interested in that. Submachine gun wise, if you're looking to swap that recluse for an equal, you're gonna be looking for a little while. The only SMGs in Season 11 are Escape Velocity, Seventh Seraph, and Death Adder. I would probably use Death Adder over Escape Velocity solely due to perk selection, but even then Death Adder isn't exactly killing it, but Death Adder does feel the most like Recluse if you're looking to replace it in that way. This is going to be a wait until season 12 situation for me mostly. The 7th Seraph SMG is back this season, but I can really only recommend it if you're doing a Warmind Cell build. I don't think it's very exciting on its own, although Vorpal Weapon is good for taking down barrier champions when SMGs are anti-barrier. How about the Powerhouse Machine Guns, 21% Delirium, Hammerhead, and Edgewise? All of them gone, replaced solely with Temporal Claws in the Prismatic Recaster. But Temporal Claws is capped at 1060, so unless Bungie changes this, I really wouldn't even bother. I held on to a 7th Seraph machine gun from Season 10, but otherwise, this is another wait for Season 12 situation for me. Of course, Thunderlord is a thing and it's still quite good, but we're mainly looking at legendary weapons here. Mountaintop is just never getting replaced from a PvE perspective unless it is replicated almost exactly. I would be surprised to see a replica of it come to the game in the near future, but Weapon Retirement enables things to come and go a little more freely, so, you know, who knows, maybe we will. But 
Again, probably not the near future. Truth Teller from this season is kind of the best you're going to do feeding Frenzy and multi-kill clip for non-boss damage, but that's only going to last you like one reload. Swashbuckler can be refreshed at the very least, so it's not the most appealing. And Spike Grenade and Field Prep for fast reloads if you're looking to do some boss DPS. We also have Martyr's Retribution from Season 9 if you're into that style of grenade launcher, but it's not going to last you that full year. Again, Mountaintop is basically not replaceable in Legendary form as of now. Before we continue, let's talk Raid Weapons. Last Wish and Garden of Salvation Weapons will be Power Cap 1360. Armor-wise, I'm not really too sure what's going on with the mod slots just yet. I'm hoping to get some clarification soon. There are a lot of Last Wish weapons and a handful of Garden weapons. In terms of what I think you should chase or keep, I will just refer to my normal PvE guidelines of reload speed and damage perks for primary style weapons. If it has the ability to roll with a reload speed and a damage perk, you should probably hang on to it, especially with the potential of Bungie reducing the effectiveness of damage and reload speed perks going into this next year. They might even just straight up get rid of them. This rule applies to like 99% of weapons. Reload plus damage perk equals keep it. Worst case scenario is you don't use it or you find something better. We're going to talk about them in the video though. So those are your big ones, but we're going to hit every archetype in the game anyway. So let's keep it rolling with auto rifles. Gnawing Hunger is a void auto that can roll with basically every damage perk in the game, which is very promising. It also has Subsistence, which synergizes with Rampage and Swashbuckler, and it can roll with Field Prep, which synergizes with any damage perk if you remember to crouch. I'll take this over Uriel's Gift, which is an Arc Auto with weaker perk selection, and I'll take it over Age Old Bond from Last Wish, and I think I'll take it over Reckless Oracle from Garden, although Reckless Oracle is pretty solid. Gnawing Hunger, also very good in PvP. The new auto, False Promises, can roll with a lot of the new perks, but unfortunately, at least in PvE, I think until damage perks fully rotate out of the game, if they ever do rotate out of the game, they're going to take priority. Fortunately for False Promises, you can get a Feeding Frenzy Rampage roll that will last you into the next year. You also have some nice PvP options. Killing Win and Unrelenting are a pretty nice combo, giving you almost everything except for damage, including health regeneration. Let's also not forget about the Summoner from Trials. This weapon is very strong right now and can roll with Overflow and Rampage. Not a bad combo. For Scout Rifles, we have Night Watch, and that's like it. That's it. Just Night Watch. But Night Watch can roll with some of the best perks in the game. Rapid Hit, Outlaw, Rampage, Multi-Kill Clip, and I would highly advise scooping up one of these top rolls to bring with you into the future. Randy's Throwing Knife will be missed, but it is mostly replaceable. I've already been graced with three very strong rolls of this weapon this season, and if scouts ever climb into the top tier of PvE, you're probably going to want a Night Watch around. Transfiguration from Last Wish can also get a decent roll on it, including the rare Rampage Kill Clip roll. Pulse rifle-wise, Cold Denial is new with the season, along with returning weapons Last Perdition and Geon 7. Cold Denial is our only kinetic option, and it comes with good perk options. Feeding Frenzy, Multi-Kill Clip, or Swashbuckler, along with some good PvP options. 340 RPM Pulses did also get the slightest PvP buff, too. In fact, if Bungie makes Redrix's Broadsword available to get this season and increases the power cap on it, I would highly recommend going and grabbing one. I don't know if I would go out and do the entire quest at this point, unless Bungie increases the power cap on it. Either way, Cold Denial is worth grabbing. But Sacred Provenance from the raid can also roll pretty well. Outlaw or Rapid Hit and Kill Clip, and that will last you another year. I will probably take it over Chattering Bone from Last Wish. Last Perdition can roll with Outlaw Rampage or Kill Clip. This pulse is also quite good. Geon 7, not as popular, not as great perk 
quality. Sidearms. We have a lot of options here, and sidearms in Season 11 have some pretty crazy potential thanks to some new mods. Last Hope has been hyped since Season 9, with people trying to get the very elusive Feeding Frenzy multi-kill clip role. If you get that, hang on to it. Last Dance is more or less an inferior version of Last Hope in terms of perk selection. Kinetic sidearms include Lonesome, Breachlight, and Enigma's Draw. Lonesome and Breachlight are the plays here, being able to roll some of the best PvE perks in the game. Lonesome will last you until 1360 power though, so I would prioritize it a little bit more than Breachlight for the long haul. Finally, bows, you got a lot of options. We have two raid bows in Accrued Redemption and Tyranny of Heaven from Garden and Last Wish, respectively. Tyranny of Heaven is the only solar option. Arsenic Bite and Point of the Stag are your arc options, and Whispering Slab is from this season. Pretty much anything that can get Archer's Tempo is good in my eyes, but with Trinity Ghoul getting its absolutely insane catalyst this season, it's really hard to recommend any other bow in the game for PvE. Trinity Ghoul is insane now with the Catalyst, and you should go get the Catalyst. It's a random drop. I got mine from a strike in the strike playlist. Grind out the Catalyst and enjoy. Moving into special weapon territory. Fusions are losing loaded question, which is a pretty big blow in my opinion, as its burst damage was quite valuable. Nowadays, the problem with fusions is that they don't really have those sexy perks that make them very appealing to use. Most of their nuance seems to revolve around PvP. In PvE, for the most part, you just kind of click and shoot. They haven't really been the most appealing option for a while since shotguns exist and have great synergy with a lot of melee builds and perks, and snipers are just way safer to use in content that will actually hurt you. Loaded Question was the only thing that could really compete with some of those other options. Hollow Words from this season can roll with Vorpal Weapon, which is better than a lot of other options out there. I'll probably grab some form of fusion, potentially the Garden one, since I just kind of like it. But yeah, I'm not a big fusion lord, even if their damage isn't as terrible as people might think. Shotguns, on the other hand, now we're talking. Now, I do want to mention that those of you with Python will be able to hang on to that until the start of Season 13. Overflow and One-Two Punch, it's pretty good. Got a lot of options here, though. Astral Horizon from Trials. Hawthorns is back. Perfect Paradox if you kept one. Seventh Seraph from Season 10. Toil and Trouble for PvPers. Wishbringer. I'm more of a One-Two Punch kind of guy as opposed to a Trench Barrel kind of guy for my shotgun usage, but it's definitely not a bad idea to grab one of each depending on the purpose of the shotgun. The Ikelo shotgun also came back and can roll with Trench Barrel. Sniper-wise, Season 11's offerings aren't insane, but you do have some options here. Long Shadow is a good PvP sniper, but Distant Tumulus has some boss damage potential with Clown Cartridge and Firing Line. The Supremacy from Last Wish has also been a favorite of mine, at least for PvP. Eye of Soul from Trials with Field Prep and Vorpal might be viable going into the future. I held on to a Trophy Hunter that will last me until Season 13. And there's also the Ikelos Sniper that can roll with 4th Times the Charm and High Impact Reserves for you solo players out there. Whisper of the Worm isn't going anywhere though, so if I do end up needing a boss damage sniper, it'll be that until it's dethroned in some way. Swords are very in fashion right now, and the best swords currently come from this season in Falling Guillotine and Temptation's Hook. There are a few swords available, and while I'm sure people will find perk combinations that might outperform these swords, it is very hard to top the nostalgia factor of these weapons Although, Falling Guillotine is legit with its heavy Dark Drinker attack. Definitely grab a sword or two with Relentless Strikes and Whirlwind Blade or Vorpal Weapon. Falling Guillotine is just nuts right now, and I cannot recommend it enough. You should get one. Grenade launchers are not very in right now, but Interference 6 can roll with Spike Grenades, Auto Loading, and Full Court, which I believe is only the second grenade launcher that is capable of that, the first one being Doomsday, but LOL Reckoning. 
These are dropping like candy for me. I've been able to get a spike grenade field prep full court roll, and I'm going to keep that one stowed away for the time being. However, this is not a replacement for Mountaintop. Rockets are also not very in right now, but they do have some potential thanks to this season's mods. I've always thought that Genesis was a really neat perk, and I don't think it works with Kill Clip, but if it ever does, I think that'll be a pretty good combo for shield destruction. If you want pure ad clear though, I don't think it matters too much what you get, but I would focus on anything that can load rockets as fast as possible, like field prep and clown cartridge, like on the Trials rocket. Auto-loading holster on bad omens is probably not a bad idea considering, at least for me, most of the time, I tend to use a rocket to splash a chunk of damage and then swap to a primary to finish some stuff off. As far as armor replacement goes, this is just a matter of finding well-rolled armor that you like. If you're looking for a quick and simple full armor set, the armor from the season pass comes with very high stats later in the pass. Although... They might not be allocated how you like. Either way, this is a great starter set for returning players looking for high roll armor. That's what I got for you right now on replacing retiring weapons. I know a lot of people are worried about replacing their guns and all of that, but I can almost guarantee that you will inevitably find something new that you like, whether it's this season or next season or the season after that. There will be new weapons, there will be new guns, there will be new opportunities, but it's time to see some of these old powerhouses hit the retirement home. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.